A week before CES, we have the predictions, Apple TV hack runs iOS apps, Kodak files bankruptcy, and much more. This is Tech Dose. Woo! Yeah. Welcome to Tech Dose, where we give you a weekly injection of gadget and tech news. Welcome to 2012, and this is the first piece of news. The Apple TV has been jailbroken for a while now, but nothing's actually appeared in the tweak area. But developers Stephen Forrest Smith and the Mukip have managed to hack the Apple TV to run iOS apps at full resolution. Right now, there is an app store for the Apple TV, but I think this will push Apple to actually have it on the system. So they created a basic app launcher and a video demoed apps like Facebook, Maps, Safari browser, and the YouTube app. And the guy did have to use the Apple keyboard and the touchpad to control the system over VNC, but it'll hopefully be easier to control using like a remote on the iPhone or the iPod touch. I think this is a really great concept and I'd love to see developers create tweaks for the Apple TV in the near future. Next story. So Kodak is filing for bankruptcy. So it's said that within the next two weeks they're going to file for bankruptcy because they've been told that if they don't do anything soon, they're going to run out of money. So they've been told to sell off some of their patents because they have a lot of patents. And I just find this crazy because they make some of the best film. So I'll be gutted if they do like go and not and stop selling stuff. And they make loads of cameras. I've got to admit though, their digital cameras aren't very good. They are like the sort of cheap, sort of give it to a kid, so if they break it, it doesn't really matter cameras. But they do still make quite decent cameras. It's like, how are they not got money? It's just, I don't know, they're just a big company that's been around for a, a long time. It's just surprising to see that they're gonna have to file for bankruptcy. I just can't believe it. Can you believe it, Dan? No. It's just crazy. It's just rude. So companies teased upcoming products just before they'll be showing at CES and the main tease I've seen so far is by HP. It's a 30 second video and it's showing what I see as fin displays spinning around and a device opens, boom, Spectra. My best guess is that it's HP's next flagship Ultrabook be really thin with high end specs. It will possibly be running Windows 8 and it'll probably have a touchscreen display so you can scroll on the Metro UI and then tap on stuff it'll be awesome and we will see this very soon at CES. So there's a cable case which allows you to hide a iPhone charging cable in your iPhone 4S case. So it's currently a Kickstarter project and I think it's a great idea because then you can have a iPhone charging cable with you like wherever you go especially if it's good for people who are using their phone a lot because for me personally I don't use my phone enough in the day for it to die during the day it usually gets to about 60% and then I charge it overnight but for people who use their phone a lot, this would be perfect. Then I imagine they'd have their MacBook, so it's like they can just quickly charge their phone and not have to go rummaging through their bag to find a cable. It's like literally on your phone. You just take your phone out, take the cable out, and then just plug it in and charge. It's perfect. So if you want to go and back that up, there's a Kickstarter link in the description. Also, probably just showed up on screen, you know? Love a third. But yeah, you can go and back that up. I think it's if you pledge over $35 then you actually... Oh my god. This is just darn right rude. So yeah, if you pledge over $35, I think it is, you actually get a pre-order of the item. So you pledge $35 and in return, they'll actually give you the case. So that's pretty cool. So just go over there and have a look at it and it tells you in more detail what they're trying to do. Brill. Now, while all of the TV brands will be jumping on the OLED TV bandwagon at CES this year, LG has released information of a 55-inch OLED TV. But best yet, it's got a 4mm wide border, which is kind of borderless, which looks so, so beautiful. Imagine having it wall-mounted on your TV. It's super thin as well. It looks so gorgeous with OLED as well. <gasps> Oh. So here's another story that I love is Impossible Project are teaming up with Polaroid. Everyone knows who Polaroid is. We well, should know who Polaroid is. And also Impossible Project are basically the people who bought all Polaroid's like factory equipment so then they could carry on making all the PX70 film and 680 film for all the Polaroid cameras. So Impossible Project are teaming up with Polaroid to bring back a new instant film which is amazing. More film is always better. So it's going to be for the Polaroid 600 Spectra cameras. So for everyone with a 600 camera, you'll be able to use this new film from Polaroid and Impossible Project. But Impossible Project have also got a big shipment of some really old Polaroid film that has been kept in chilled. So you can actually go and get like some proper Polaroid film. And I think that's probably what they're trying to replicate is this old film, but they're going to make it new stuff. 
which is good. It's good. So CES stands for Consumer Electronics Show. It happens normally at the start of the year, and now the dates for this year is January 10th to the 13th. And here's our predictions of what's going to happen at Commu Consumer Electronics Show, where companies show off their next gadgets for the upcoming year, except Apple, which is stupid. So I think super thin OLED TVs are going to be quite a big thing at this year's CES because last year was 3D TVs and OLED thin TVs have, have been around a while but they've never really been that sort of like look at these TVs they're super thin and amazing so I think this year it's going to be a lot about that. A huge attack of smartphones and tablets running Android ice cream sandwich. I also think we'll probably see Ford with another high tech car because they always bring out these super crazy high tech cars of like loads of iPhone sync capabilities and Parrot and oh, it's just crazy. A wide selection of 3D TV and OLED HD TVs. I also think 7.1 surround sound systems are going to be something that we'll see this year because movies like Transformers have been filmed in 7.1 surround sound, which is basically like the front, the left, and the right front, back, left, and right, and also left and right walls that 7.1 surround sound. So I don't actually think there's many 7.1 surround sound systems out. So I have a feeling that there's going to be this at CES, which would be really cool to see, because 7.1 surround sound, I can just imagine, sounds amazing. I haven't heard 7.1 yet, which is really upsetting. A wave of Ultrabooks, which will be slim with really beefy specs. So a while back, Sony showed their like 3D HD headband, which like you put it over your eyes and you watch a movie, it's like futuristic stuff. I have a feeling that we'll probably see this at CES, and they'll probably demo it a lot more and let public bystanders have a go. I also have a feeling that maybe other companies might show their own version, but you never know. It might just be a Sony thing. They've always been quite futuristic in the stuff that they make, so we'll see. And some information about Windows 8 and some laptops containing Windows 8. So leave a comment below telling us your CES predictions so we can see what you think is going to be this year's big main item that everyone's going to be talking about and wanting. Yeah, leave that below and we'll just like read them and just be like, oh yeah, I never thought about that. Or, oh my god, yeah, that's exactly what we said. So don't forget, next week is going to be a CES special. We'll be talking about all the new crazy stuff that's been announced at CES. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget, we also have a Facebook page. Just like go on this link right here. And you can check out our Facebook page. We post our videos and behind the scenes pictures on there. So you can like keep up to date with when we're recording and stuff. Also, we have a Twitter. So you can follow all of us. And all of us, I mean me and Dan and our TechDose one. Again, you can just keep up to date with all TechDose stuff. Also, all the links to all the news articles are in the description. So if you want to read these stories in more detail, you can do so. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. That always helps us out a lot. So thank you. Thank you for watching. See you special next week. And I yeah. don't really know what Dan's doing behind me. See you later. Bye.